jumping right into things. There's ICs in here, and I think they're over in this corner. Or, how do you get into there? Okay, I sliced right through, but it's down there. Okay, and if the tracking number is correct, these should be GPIO expanders MCP23017. I've been using the through-hole parts, but I have some other projects coming up where space on the board may be an issue. So if I can squeeze the same amount of result out of just that package, if I say have two GPIO expanders on one board, well, I can cut it down to just that size and I have a spare. So I'm working on a similar design to this relay driver, trying to downsize it. And I have another upcoming PCB project where I need some sort of a Wi-Fi module, whether it's Node MCU or ESP something or other. Probably doesn't need to be an ESP32. So I thought I would get some more Wemos D1 minis in stock. So I got three of them. So rather than take these all out of the bags, I've got an existing one here, so all the USB stuff is on the bottom, then there's headers, and the ESP8266 module on top, so I can plug this onto a PCB and do some Wi-Fi stuff. What I've got in mind, I want to take these current transformers for AC that I got in a recent mailbag, and I want to be able to plug this into a PCB, clamp this onto some sort of AC wire where I can measure the current, and what I can do is set a threshold so that if the current exceeds a certain amount as a set point, I can generate some sort of a direct signal output from this module, but I can also send a Wi-Fi trigger to some other Wi-Fi receiver, so maybe another D1 Mini, which is why I needed to have more on hand. So when something runs with a certain amount of current, I can do some other activity or just send an email alert or something. So that's what I'm doing with these D1 Minis this time. And related to that, I need a way to plug those current transformers into the PCB. So I bought a bunch of these 3.5 millimeter headphone style jacks because this is a 3.5 millimeter plug so that will go nicely on a PCB. Up until now, I was using a similar style audio jack, but it's surface mount, so I just decided to get through hole this time for a change, and I can just have options moving forward if I have some of each in stock, whatever the application I'm doing calls for. And for yet another upcoming PCB project, I needed some more touch tone DTMF decoder chips, MT8870. I went with through hole because I can also use these for breadboarding when I'm doing telephone stuff and I want to try experimenting with touch tone decoding so I can just throw that easily on a breadboard. But from a couple of years ago I have these surface mount ones so maybe once I finalize something I'll just do a PCB with surface mount to make it smaller. But I did design a PCB I'm going to be putting together soon that does use the through-hole version because I could not find these when I was doing the PCB. Then I found them when I was looking for something else, which is always what happens. So now I have both options. I'll be using these on a PCB soon for telephone stuff. Speaking of telephone stuff, I have a couple of packages relating to that. This one's full of a bunch of heavy-duty through-hole parts. These are basically a bunch of high voltage, maybe at least 250 volts, maybe 400 volts, and maybe a couple of microfarads each, and some 2 watt, 220 ohm, I believe, resistors, since this is already trying to come out of the bag. Yep, 220 ohms. So again, working with telephone stuff, if I want to simulate a telephone being picked up off hook if I don't want to plug in a real telephone. I can throw a couple of hundred ohm resistor across the phone line and that will establish a loop current so the rest of the system will believe a telephone device has appeared on the line. And resistors like this can be just used otherwise within telephone circuits. 
so they may need to dissipate at least half a watt, and two watts seem like a good value. And these capacitors are useful. You can put them in series with one of the telephone ring or tip lines and AC couple something to the phone line. So you provide DC blocking, for example, and then you'll only have an AC signal like a ring signal passing through. So you can make a ring detect circuit or couple audio in and out of the phone line. I'll be working on stuff like this soon. So this is 250 volts, 2.2 microfarads, and in previous experiments I ended up with 1.5 micro or larger being good, so this is a 2.2. I should be able to put in a circuit. 250 volts, 1 micro, 0.47 micro, 400 volts, because you never know what you need. A couple more telephone things here. I'll just take these out. So there's some high voltage TVS diodes for transient voltage suppression. And I have a couple of these little modules. There's what they look like on front and back sides. It's got 0.1 inch headers, so these go nicely into a breadboard or a PCB. So they have a boost converter on there. And what these are, they are slick SLIC modules. Basically, this can help me set up a simulated phone line service. And these TVS diodes just happen to be recommended parts in the datasheet for this, so I ordered those as well. And I think these clamp anything above 82 volts. So basically what happens here, you connect up a phone jack or something here, and this creates all the voltage rails you need, like close to 48 volts, and then you pick up the phone and the voltage will drop as normal. This provides audio in and out paths to the phone line. So if I don't want to couple my own circuit with capacitors onto a phone line, this module has that feature built in to get audio in and out of the phone. And this also generates a ring voltage. And that's good because I would no longer need to mess with high voltages and bulky transformers to get AC. This doesn't generate AC, but what it does is use the onboard boost converter, and I think it generates about 75 volts, and it alternates the polarity. So it switches plus 75 or so and ground back and forth, simulating AC at a high enough voltage to ring a phone. And of course, doing PCBs, I need parts from Mauser. I really wish they had easier to open boxes. And I'll just take all these parts out as usual. I see a resistor network here. This is a bunch of resistors where there's one common terminal, and then a bunch of single resistors where the other end is all common. So this can be an array of pull-up resistors, and there's lots of things. I've got various screw terminals of different styles and sizes to handle lots of current. I just wanted to see which ones I prefer. So I'm working on a PCB where I'm going to have a bunch of outputs and I'm going to have a row of screw terminals going along each side of the board and all the other control stuff in the middle. And I have various MOSFETs. It's good to see FETs being shipped in proper anti-static packaging for once. This is a 74LS32. That's going to be used on another PC expansion card, not this one. This is the floppy controller card with the serial port. I'm working on an IDE hard drive PCB interface, not designed by me, but made from a GitHub project, so I need some glue logic, another 7400 series for the IDE card, some DC to DC converters, that would be the AP3012 switcher that I've used on several projects already, and a bunch of 0805, I believe, LEDs of different colors. I really need a, a place to store parts I'm going to be using in the near future, because it just gets in the way. So I'm just going to start laying things aside. A couple of FETs that I got here are just little SOT223's surface mount, again, to conserve space. But I'm going to use them to drive a bunch of solenoids. In particular, I have a bunch like this. And these are rated for 24 volts. And they happen to draw, I think, around 700 milliamps each. So my existing relay driver board, using those ULN 2803's, you can't really run a bunch of 700 milliamp solenoids on one of these chips, so I'm just getting different FETs that can handle 
several amps each and 50 or 60 volts, so well within specification for a 24 volt solenoid or relay. So I'm going to have a bunch of those drivers connected up like this. I haven't designed the board yet, so part of what I'm doing here, I'm just prototyping in advance. I want to get the circuit figured out and then knowing the parts I'm using and all of the specifications so I can make the right footprint. I want to be able to try to get this as good as I can on the first try. So there we have it again, another big bunch of parts, all pretty much for a specific use and maybe a little bit left over for parts in the future. So because I'm going to use these things on immediate projects, I don't mind spending a bunch of money on Mauser, especially with part shortages. I only have so many options for certain parts. So thanks to Patreon and channel supporters for helping make this possible. Come back and see what I end up getting working with all of this. Solenoids, phone lines, IDE hard drive controller for an old 286. Lots of fun coming up.